Monday's deadly car crash in the East Village, killing three homeless men and injuring several others. Homeless advocates are now saying that this incident is shedding a bright light on an issue they are hoping to solve once and for all. Mayor Todd Gloria announcing the convention center. Currently housing the homeless there is now scheduled to move out about 600 individuals on Monday and into other shelters. KOSI's Dan Plant joins us live. He's got more on that and also what appears to now be a growing problem here of homelessness. Dan? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, yes, those shelters have been empty throughout this whole coronavirus situation. When they emptied out the shelters because they considered them to be too crowded, and then they moved them in, yes, to the convention center that had all that room where they could space people out, and Golden Hall as well. But that's coming to an end, as you said, and that's going to be in four days from now. So they're going to go back into these shelters, into the tents, into the temporary shelters, and into hotels that have been purchased over the past several months with taxpayers' money through the city and through the county, I believe, but definitely through the city. There are hotels now out there available. And by the way, a lot of federal money available through HUD to take care of some of these needs. So today I got a chance to talk with a homeless advocate, you know, several days after that tragedy that happened over by City College. A lot of people are just saying, look, the situation is getting horrible out there. And as I drove around the city earlier today, I really couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my eyes as you get closer to Petco Park. It was both sides of the street just lined with tents. You couldn't walk the sidewalks. Hundreds of people are out there once again. So the situation is getting bad. And clearly that's one of the reasons why those folks were injured and killed, uh, because the people are all over the streets again. Uh, but today I chatted with a homeless expert. It's been traveling and following this issue for 12 years, and he basically has some ideas on what we should do from here on out. Take a look. It was a tragic wake-up call that the coronavirus is not the only crisis in our community. The homeless crisis has been plaguing San Diego for decades, and the death of three homeless people this week puts the spotlight back on the streets. This isn't good. People, people are struggling to survive out here. The horrible, tragic accident up on the B Street Tunnel. We have, to, we have to take a more urgent approach to what's going on. Michael McConnell is a retired entrepreneur who has dedicated the last 12 years of his life to helping the helpless on the streets of San Diego. He is hoping this tragedy under the bridge will create a new sense of urgency for what's happening out here. Obviously, the situation is urgent. So the faster we can act, the better. Looking around the streets of the East Village these days, you can see the urgency. The tent cities are back. As much as the city and the county have done to shelter people during the pandemic, the number of people still on the street looks about the same as before. It's the same people. They're just more visible now. They Before, it seemed like the city was pushing people here and there. And, and they weren't on this particular street or, or the street over, but they were somewhere. During the coronavirus lockdowns, hundreds of homeless people were transferred from the bridge shelters to the convention center or Golden Hall. Many of those people have found homes, jobs, and reconnected with family. The rest are headed back to the bridge shelters or somewhere else. What we got to do is know everybody who's out here and figure out what the path is for each and every person and who needs to be working with them. It's not always going to work the first time, but we cannot give up on people. We have to keep trying different things, different approaches, and keep at it. And these days, there is more money than ever in history to address these issues. The so-called pandemic relief money from the federal government also set aside billions of dollars to create some kind of housing for the homeless. If we have hotel rooms that will be funded by the federal government, they're funding them for a reason. They know this is happening all across the country. What can we do to get folks off the street into something that's appropriate as quick as possible and then figure out what the wants and needs are? And the best way to address those needs as hard as it might be, boots on the ground, one-on-one -on -one contact, and the compassion to care. Try to figure out what folks want. We talked earlier about, it's about building relationships with folks, talking, figuring out what's your family unit out here? What's going on? What would you like to get off of the street? 
And there is a really, really good example of the outreach program working out in the East County. It's Lamar Park. I spent a lot of time there, a couple of months actually, there during that homeless crisis that was happening. There were dozens and dozens of tents out there. And we went out there and spotlighted this. And Diane Jacob and the county supervisors got involved. They got hotel vouchers. They sent out the homeless outreach team from the county. And they literally created relationships with each and every one of those people on a first name basis and to know exactly who they were where they came from and exactly what they needed, whether it was substance abuse, mental health, uh, just housing, a job. Some people are just out of a job. They just need a job. They just need a, a place to stay for a while. So each, every individual out here has different needs, which makes it so complicated. But that is why we need to get the outreach teams out there to go out to the streets, show a little respect to these people, show that we care, and then they'll reach back and say, this is what I need. It's not easy. Some of these people are very, very difficult to reach, as we know, uh, because of mental health issues and other things. Uh, but we got to keep trying. And as they say, I think we can do better here in San Diego than what we're doing now. And certainly now that our eyes are open to this, um, we're going to be talking a lot more about this in the near future, because what I saw downtown earlier today just blew my mind. I just didn't know that it was still there like that. It's really, really bad. So we'll, we'll be focusing on this and clearly um, and sadly, uh, that tragedy that happened underneath the bridge has shined the spotlight once again on a problem that we have had here in San Diego for decades, as I say. So uh, that's what's going on, and hopefully we can get to work and help everybody in our community, including those on the street who need help the most. And by the way, I'm standing in OB, and right underneath me where I am on the pier, of course, there will be people sleeping tonight, as there are every night. So it's everywhere, and it's very sad. So that's what's going on out here. We all feel very fortunate at this point just to have a roof over our head, quite honestly, uh, when we look at things like this. So that's what's going on, you guys. Throw it back to you. Yeah, so true. I've got to count our blessings. Uh, thankfully, a lot of good people, a lot of good organizations trying to help everybody who's homeless. Dan, thanks. Good yeah. to see you.